Today we're going to do a deep dive into this exam paper that covers a variety of topics within Mathematics Extension 2. We're going to have a look at mechanics, vectors, a bit of proof, all kinds of different things. So let's get stuck into this and we're also going to try and highlight some of the key errors that were made or are likely to be made when looking at these questions as well as, where appropriate, multiple ways of solving each problem. So let's have a look at question 1a. A particle moving in a straight line obeys this particular equation that is provided here, which I'm going to highlight because obviously uh, we're going to need to use this in a second, where x is its displacement from the origin in meters and v is its velocity in meters per second. Okay, so we've got some units there, that's handy. What is the question actually asking of us? Part one, show that the particle is moving in simple harmonic motion and then subsequently determine the interval that the particle moves through and the maximum speed of the particle. All right, so let's just make note of that before we go any further. Um, what we wanna do is first, this is kind of like a proof question, right? So we're not trying to find a result in part one, we're just trying to show that this is actually um, simple harmonic motion, this V squared equation that we've got here. And then also we are looking for in part two, two separate things. Um, number one, the interval. So I guess you could say that's like the domain, like where can this particle move between? Cause simple harmonic motion has two extremes that you're going to be going back and forth and back and forth. And then finally, we're looking for a maximum speed. How fast can the particle go? All right, so that's uh, what we need to do. Let's have a look at, what was this question one? Part A, let's look at part one first. So as we already flagged, we're gonna to need to work with this equation that's given to us. It's kind of the only piece of information that will decide for us whether this is gonna be simple harmonic motion or not. And you can see right there, I think that's just big enough for, for us to read. It's V squared equals nine outside of five plus four X minus X squared. So if this is where we can start, where are we going to go? Well, the key characteristic of simple harmonic motion that we know about, the way that we define simple harmonic motion from the beginning is that the acceleration that's acting on an object under simple harmonic motion is always opposite to um, the direction of the displacement, right? So whichever way, if you're like moving to the left, you're, um, acceleration is going to be to the right and uh, vice versa. If you're on the right, then it's gonna to go to the left. Um, and so that's that sort of restoring force that's always pushing you back towards the center in proportion to how far you are from the center, the further away you are, the more it pushes you back. That's what produces simple harmonic motion. So I need to get from this equation, which is about V squared, into something that tells me about acceleration. Now there are a few different ways to do this, um, but certainly the most clear and obvious way is to say one of the ways that we can um, state acceleration, we can say, uh, what was I using? Orange, right? Um, we can say that X double dot can be written as um, the derivative with respect to X of half V squared. This was the result that we got out of um, a couple of uses of the chain rule, if you remember that um, result. So because I've got this half V squared appearing in this particular way of you know, articulating or expressing acceleration, um, it makes it very easy to go from this V squared up into that result, okay? Um, there are other ways you might try and go about it, but they're not gonna be very helpful. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let's do this approach uh, and see how it works. So for starters, uh, I need a half V squared, not a V squared in this. So I'm just gonna divide both sides by two. Uh, this term here remains unchanged in the brackets there. That's great. And now I'm gonna differentiate with respect to X. So I get the derivative of half V squared with respect to X. And then on the right hand side, what am I gonna get? Well, I'll leave that constant coefficient out the front, it doesn't really affect things. Um, and then when I have a look at what's inside the brackets, that five is a constant, doesn't affect the gradient at all. That four X is gonna differentiate down into four and that minus X squared is gonna differentiate into minus 2x. So from there, you can see, oh look, this is great. Uh, I've got a factor of a half out here that can go into the brackets. So that's gonna leave me with uh, nine on the outside and then two minus x on the inside. And the reason why you might recall we introduced this is because that's a way of articulating or expressing acceleration. So there's x double dot. 
Now, what was I saying before about like the definition of simple harmonic motion? In simple harmonic motion, um, x double dot, the acceleration should be opposed, so that's what the negative sign is for, some constant um, multiplied by whichever direction of displacement you are in, right? So you can see if displacement is positive, then this negative sign is gonna make acceleration negative and vice versa. So I'm looking for something like that here, right? Um, you can see it's not difficult to take uh, a minus sign out the front. Um, that nine, I, I can just leave that, that's my n squared. I'll just write that as nine. And then having taken the minus sign out, um, I can, a factor of minus one I should say, I can write that as x minus two. And we're done. Um, you can see it's not exactly the same as this, but that's because it's off by a constant, which means there's been a shift. Um, the center of motion, unlike in this situation, which would be x equals zero, the center of motion here is gonna be x equals two and that's all there is to it, okay? So, um, I can say off of this, therefore, this is simple harmonic motion. I don't need to prove any more. Now, I mentioned before there are other ways to go about this, and this was problematic for students who attempted it. Um, when some students look and they say, oh, this is an acceleration, sorry, this is a velocity equation and I need to get to acceleration, some students thought, well, the way to get from um, velocity to um, this, you know, out of here, they might have gotten confused with displacement, so they tried to integrate, right? Um, in fact, here you've got to differentiate, but some students would have differentiated incorrectly because they think, oh, acceleration um, can also be written as dv on dt. It's the change in velocity with respect to time. The reason why that's problematic is because you haven't been given an expression here on the right hand side with respect to time. So trying to differentiate that with respect to t, not very useful for you. Um, also there were a few arithmetic errors that could creep in as you went through this, these lines of working, but if you had um, a clear path charted through the question, it generally wasn't too difficult. Okay, so that was part one. I've just shown that it's simple harmonic motion. 